So we know how to work with numbers and strings and simple values, but how do we work with collections of things? If I want to make a list of numbers or I want to make a, you know, a person that has a name and an age, maybe the name's a string and age is a number, uh, how do I do that in Elm? Uh, we're going to cover that in this section. Uh, and we're going to start by taking a look at how we do it in JavaScript. We're going to run some node, uh, and then we're going to see how we can do that with Elm. And so we're going to use the Elm REPL up here. Um, so let's start with lists, okay? In JavaScript, we call these arrays. Um, you might call them lists, um, but uh, when you want to make an array of numbers, uh, you can use a, kind of a square bracket here to start the list, and we're going to use commas to separate the items in that list. And so at the end of the day, in JavaScript, we have our array of numbers. Uh, we can do the exact same syntax, and what we get in Elm is called a list. So we have a list of numbers in Elm. Um, so we can do the exact same thing in JavaScript. We can say uh, we want a list, but this time we want it to be strings. So this is A, B, and C. Um, here, uh, we do the exact same syntax, and that's how Elm uh, makes lists too. So uh, up top, we have a list of numbers, and then uh, here we have a list of strings. Uh, one thing uh, that's interesting is in JavaScript, we can mix these types. Um, so you can have an array in JavaScript that has the first element as a string, and the second element is an int. Let's try that out in Elm and see how it goes. So we get an error. Uh, when we try this uh, in Elm, this is the, the error that the compiler gives us. It says the second element of this list does not match all the previous elements. The second element is a number of type number, and all of the previous elements in the list are strings. So in Elm, everything in the list has to be the same value because lists are designed for looping. Um, there, it's a kind of a separate data structure uh, from what you might use these mismatched uh, you know, uh, array types for. So if you wanted to do something similar to this in Elm, you can use a tuple. And a tuple is just like a pair here uh, where the first element is a string and the second element is the number that we're looking for. So here you'll see you know, string and number is what Elm uh, interprets here. Uh, we use the round parentheses there to say this is like a pair of values uh, and it's not designed for looping. It's just, it's a thing with a slot with a string and it's a thing with a slot for an int. Um, so uh, that's kind of the, the two things you might use arrays for, lists of values, and then uh, like keeping track of pairs without like any like labels on them, any keys or values. Uh, generally, we don't use tuples too often in Elm. Uh, what we end up using uh, more often is objects or records. Um, so what I mean by that is if I've got a value in here that's like one, two, three, true, false, uh, I could use a tuple for this, but it's not really clear from looking at this what those trues and falses are supposed to represent. Um, so I could do the same thing here in JavaScript, right? I could say one, two, three, lowercase true, lowercase false. And this would just kind of be confusing to look at. So um, generally in JavaScript, when we want to you know, have a collection of information like this, uh, the more fields we add, the the closer uh, we decide it's time to reach for an object. So maybe this is like, you know, flight info and a passenger has an ID and, uh, you know, um, is domestic for the flight is true and then has passport is false. Let's say that we get some weird airline system where they only care about these three pieces of information. So we have an info variable uh, and it's really easy to access the fields here using this dot syntax here. So we can say info.id, that'll give us the one, two, three. Info dot is domestic, and that gives us the true. So in JavaScript, we use these objects uh, to be able to create kind of groups of information, things that have IDs and is domestic and uh, has passport. So we do the same thing uh, in Elm. If you're kind of writing idiomatic Elm, you're gonna you know, reach for records for the same reasons. So uh, in Elm, we call uh, these objects records. They behave a little bit differently. And so they have a little bit different of a name. Um, but the syntax is really, really similar. The only difference is that you're gonna notice that I'm using equal signs. We always use equal signs for assignment in Elm. We don't mix it up. Notice how in JavaScript, we used equals when giving info a value, but not when giving ID a value. Uh, it's, it's different in Elm. So we're always gonna use equals as equals operator means uh, we're gonna assign a value uh, from, from the right to the left uh, every time. Um, so you'll see that even our records follow that rule. 
So this is creating a record uh, in Elm. Um, so just like you saw with JavaScript, if I wanted to do info.id uh, in Elm, uh, that would work. So boom, I got one, two, three. And if I want to find out if it's domestic, boom, info.isDomestic is going to give me true. So I can create these uh, records just like objects that map keys to values. And that allows me to easily access information uh, off of um, a record. If I try to access something that's not there, uh, like unknown thing, uh, in JavaScript, uh, this runs, but it just kind of gives us an undefined or like a blank value. Uh, if I try to do that in Elm, uh, the compiler catches it. So this isn't something that you can have in production. The Elm compiler is gonna, is gonna catch it and it's gonna help you out and be like, hey, I don't know what this is. <laughs> you set a record, the record you defined above has these like three things. Um, so maybe you meant is domestic or, you know, it's, it's going to try to find a match that's close. So if we give it something that's closer, you know, like instead of typing ID, if we type in like identifier, you know, it's like, Hey, maybe identifier is ID. Um, so it's going to try to help out because it knows that we're trying to get information that can't be there. If you switch from JavaScript to TypeScript, you're going to get more error messages. Uh, you know, error messages closer to this, uh, for sure. Uh, so that's one of the benefits of using Elm. Um, but uh, that is how records work when it comes to getting values. Uh, but how do we set values? How do we change them? Well, um, in JavaScript, we can add new fields onto objects. Um, so you can say like new thing equals, you know, X. And all of a sudden info has changed. The original info that we declared above here uh, is no longer uh, the same thing. So now we've got this new property. Elm doesn't let you add new properties on a records. We'll get into dictionaries. That, that's going to be how we can do stuff like that later. Um, but uh, for records, uh, it's they're kind of fixed. They have the same amount of keys, uh, and they always map to the same type of value. Um, and another thing you can't do is you can't change a value once it's there. So new thing, uh, you know, you can't you can't modify uh, a record in Elm. So if I try to say like info.id equals 456, uh, Elm would get confused. It's like, are you trying to compare it to 456? It's like you can't assign uh, keys um, in, in a record uh, to, uh, to new values. Um, the way it works in Elm when you want to update something is it's a lot closer to uh, the spread operator in JavaScript. So I'm going to go all the way back up to the top real quick. Uh, we're going to kind of reset info to what we had it as so that these two match up. And I'm going to show you um, what I mean if I want to uh, change. Let's say we want to set has, pa has passport is true. Uh, what you can do is you can use the spread operator and say take everything from info, keep it the same, but I want has passport to change. I want that to change to true. What we've done here is we've created a new value. We did not mess with info. If I take info.hasPassport, notice that this is still false. Uh, we're not actually changing the variable out from underneath itself. Um, info is unchanged. New info has uh, a new value for hasPassport. Uh, this is exactly what we're going to do in Elm, but the syntax is going to be a little bit different. So rather than using the spread operator, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say take info as is, uh, and we're going to use a pipe. Uh, this is a little bit weird. This is probably the weirdest syntax I think I encounter uh, in Elm is we've got this pipe uh, to say, just change these values. So we're going to take info as is, but we're going to set has passport to true. Uh, oops. And we're going to make sure to use a capital T. Otherwise, we're going to have issues because uh, Booleans and Elm are lowercase. So we have info and then we have new info. I'm going to do that one more time. This is our info. This is our new info. And notice that has passport on our original info is still false. We didn't um, modify that. Uh, once you declare a variable in Elm, uh, it's not going to be modified out from underneath you. No one, no one can do it to you. And not you, not a teammate. <laughs> no one can mess with your variables. You can rely that info is always going to have those values uh, and people aren't going to be sneakily swapping stuff out from underneath you. So that's uh, the introduction to records. Uh, in the next section, we're going to go uh, deeper into functions uh, and try to give you a better understanding of how you can apply arguments, uh, how the spaces and the parentheses work, uh, that kind of thing. So thanks for watching.